In today's video, color balancing to get the ideal color and using the x right color checker to do so. You're gonna wanna stick around. This is how we do. do it. What's up everybody, it's Shane here at Waiting To Be Seen and I wanna welcome you back to my channel for what feels like ages and it's because at the very end of July, I became a dad. For the very first time, I have a little baby girl. My wife and I are thrilled to bits, but of course, being a new dad means that I've very much taken up all of my brain space and all of my time dealing with my daughter. So this is the first video back and I'm excited because I'm not entirely talking about color grading because color grading is, is a bit more of a specialized field of dealing with color and adjusting your footage so that you can get a specific type of colored look. Today I'm talking about just getting white balance and, and your color, your natural color. Correct. And so the way that I am doing that is using an x right color checker. This is the x right color checker video. It's an expensive piece of kit. It might not look like much, but I think I paid like $200 or $240 for this a couple of years ago. <clears throat> and the reason why it's so expensive is because all of these bits here, they're actually spectrally neutral. Ooh, that's a fancy word, <laughs> right? Basically, it means that whatever light source is hitting this is being reflected and this isn't absorbing any particular spectrum of color, you know, because our cameras see in red, blue and green. And some of these might actually reflect a little bit more red or it might reflect a little bit more green or blue, right? This actually just reflects without any spectral anomalies at all. And then the same for this side. So this is good for getting a white balance, even though it's 18% gray, but it's also good just for exposure levels because it's 18% gray. There is a cheaper version of this, which is called the Color Checker Passport. It does exactly the same thing, but it's just about this size. It's a lot smaller and can fit in your top pocket, which makes a big difference. So. This is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you some footage and we'll jump right in. On the outset, the footage doesn't look terrible. It looks okay, but you'll see the before and after. It, it actually makes a really decent difference. This is the basic editing workspace that you'd see. And then when you click on color, color automatically opens a number of different lumetri options and scopes. Obviously, I've been playing around with this a little bit, so it's gonna look a little bit different. What I would encourage you to do is to move the panels around so that it works best for you. So let's have a look here. I've got some footage. You can see I'm holding up the uh, color checker and I've got both sides showing at different points. First thing I'm going to do is actually just open up the scopes a little bit more. I can push the effects control over there so I don't see that so much. And I'm going to open up the parade, the RGB parade here. So now we've got two options. First things first, what are we going to do? We're going to drag this over a little bit and under opacity I'm just going to free draw a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a line around. Let's open things up a bit. Let's move this around. There we go. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? Click, 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 and click. Okay, so that's now masked everything out. You guys, I'm pretty sure know about masks and how they work, so I won't go into those details. Actually, let me just turn off the uh, the vector scope for a moment. Red, blue, and green. They're looking pretty okay, right? But you can see at the moment that the red and the blue, they're, they're kind of close, but the green's actually a little bit under, isn't it? And and to be honest, the the red is probably pushed up the most. If I open up basic correction, the cheats way of getting things done is actually click on white balance selector and then just click on that. Now you'll see under Lumetri scopes, it has actually done a really, really good job of aligning those a little bit more closely. So I think that in this instance, I'm probably not going to have to do a whole bunch more for now. So let's have a look before and after. So. You can see the whole thing's moving the reds down a little bit and it's pushing the greens up a little bit. Yeah, very cool. Now let's forward a little bit so that we can see the other side 
I'll turn on the mask again. Let's zoom back into 150%. Now what we want to do here is actually adjust the mask. So I'll click on the mask and we'll just drag it so that it's uh, sitting around just the inside here. From the white and the two sets of gray down to the black. Now an important element that's, that's kind of needs saying is that the black is actually a little bit reflective and so there it is. If you see that, that is actually going to skew the color because it's reflecting the light directly. It needs to be seen but not reflect the light when you're using this piece of kit. What we need is to see white at 100%. The first grey at 60, the second grey at around 30, and then black needs to be down at zero. So let's adjust that and we'll do so under the color wheels by adjusting shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's grab the shadows and we'll just pull the shadows down. And you'll see that's starting to pull everything down. So we'll just bring it down to the bottom. If you go too far, you start to crush the blacks on that floor. And you don't want to do that. You want it to kind of just just touch on there, maybe go a little bit further, but not too much. Now the highlights, we want that to, to get the highlights, the white to get up towards 100% there, or 255, okay? And now our mid-tones are going to sit in the, in the middle there. So let's push the mid-tones up so we get to 60 and 30. Now you can see in getting 60 and 30, the blacks have lifted a little bit. So we'll pull down the shadows again, and it really is a little bit of a dance between these two at the moment. So mid-tones up a bit, but those shadows need to come down a little bit more. And now maybe that highlight can push up just a touch. Okay, now we'll bring the mid-tones down a little bit. It's not 100% perfect, but for the sake of the video, you can see what I'm doing. We're getting that dialed in Lumetri color before and after. So the contrast is actually set correctly, making a big difference. We're almost there. The first thing was using the 18% card. The second thing is then using this. The next part is then to adjust the actual colors themselves with the color swatch that we have here. Again, we'll enable the mask. Let's grab the mask here and we're just gonna shift the mask over a little bit. We're showing just those swatches using the uh, parade isn't exactly what we need right now. Let's jump into the vector scope and we're going to use the vector scope with the Y, U and V values. I'm going to turn off the parade for now because this is what we really want to see at the moment. Let's close the color wheel and match. So what we're going to be using is the curves. So let's open that up and we're actually going to use the hue and saturation curves rather than the RGB curves. Now the first thing that I want to do is actually just uh, under hue versus saturation is, let me just move these over a little bit so you can see this a bit clearer, okay? At these points here, you can see there's these intersections of lines. Those intersections, if I click on that, that is actually this point here, this yellow point here. So let's pop one on the green, pop one on the cyan, pop one on the, the blue, pop one on the magenta. And you can see that it's, it's really difficult to kind of get the red just underneath. Just drag that along a little bit and you'll then be able to do so a lot easier. Okay, there we go. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take all of the hue versus the saturation and we're going to say, okay, for this particular hue, we want to push that out or pull that in so that it sits at 50%. Well, in those squares, it is 100% saturation. And at the middle, it's completely desaturated. So what we want to do is to move each of these points that we've just created under hue versus saturation so that it sits at around 50%, halfway between that center dot and the square. Let's start with the yellow. I think the yellow is currently a little bit too far. So let's pull that in a little bit. We'll try and be gentle with it. Now the green, the green's probably looking okay. That cyan is definitely a little bit too soft. So we'll boost that cyan. Yep, the blue, the blue might be a little bit too much. Maybe we'll drop the blue a little bit. We'll see, we'll come back to that. The magenta, is probably also a little bit too much, I think. 
don't want to move it around too much. And the red, that red is probably also a little bit too much. So really, I think that we've boosted the greens and the cyan and everything else seemed kind of close. That wasn't too bad. Looking at this, can you tell what's wrong with it? Is there any chance you can tell what's wrong with it? I'm looking at it and going, well, the green and the cyan, they don't actually seem to be aligned with the green box and the cyan box. Perfect. That's because the white balance isn't quite accurate. And so that's where adjusting the color is going to make it accurate. So let's do that. The way that we do that is to go to the next tab, the next box, which is hue versus hue. So let's just uh, add some of those markers. Green seems to be a little bit off. So you're not going to have to move this around all that much. If I adjust this up a little bit, you'll see it's starting to push towards yellow. So we're going to actually want to drag that down a little bit so that it is aligned with that green a little bit more. And that's looking a bit better. And then I think the cyan can probably push a little bit, not too much. The blue, blue seems to be just a tiny, tiny bit off, doesn't it? So let's, let's try and just a touch. Cyan, cyan, blue, yeah, they're looking good. Yellow, I think that seems to be okay. The red, the red seems to be a little bit off as well, doesn't it? So let's let's slightly adjust that. Now you can see I'm not having to do an awful lot with it. It's just it's just slightly tweaking it. And now that we've got that, I can see that the cyan is probably can probably push even a little bit more if I come back up to hue and saturation now. Let's push that, let's boost that back up a bit. The blue, I think, maybe can even come up a little bit. Let's boost that a bit more. And maybe that yellow. Maybe that yellow can come back up a bit now. So it's, it's almost now a perfect, perfect wagon wheel in the scope. Let's do this. Back to 100%. Fit the window. Let's turn off that opacity. Look at that. So, Lumetri color before and after. Before and after. And so there it is, how to get the most color accurate footage that you can using the Color Checker video in Premiere Pro. I hope that that has been of use to you. And if it has, then give me a thumbs up down below. Let me know that you've enjoyed it and please leave a comment. Let's have a conversation about some of the tools that you might have been using in the past and whether or not you think something like this might be of use to you now. If you think that videos such as this one might be of use to you now and into the future, then consider subscribing to the channel as well. You know the drill. Click on that big red subscribe button down below. Click on the notification bell right alongside that and YouTube, they are going to do the rest for you. They will let you know as soon as my latest content drops week to week and I would love to have you on board for the journey, especially now that I'm starting to get back into the swing of things after having my newborn girl. Whew. Thanks so much for stopping by. This has been Shane for Waiting to Be Seen. I hope you have a fantastic Friday. I hope that you're going to have a fantastic weekend and that the week to come looks like it's going to be a good one for you. Love you guys and we'll talk soon. Bye. That's going to leave a mark. What? <laughs>